Greetings again everyone, and today I'm checking out a lens I'm super curious about, the Nikon Z24-120mm to 120 mm f4 s. It's a brand new premium zoom lens for their Z mount mirrorless camera system, and it covers a full frame image circle. With that brilliant zoom range, which is extra useful for travel photography, landscape work, general use and even portraits if you zoom all the way in, as well as its nice constant maximum aperture of f4, this thing is destined to sell well, whatever I or any other reviewer might say about it, but for those of you who are more discerning, well, enjoy your lecture. It costs 1,100 US dollars or 1,100 pounds here in the UK, so it is definitely being marketed as a premium product, and I'd like to thank Nikon UK for loaning me a sample copy of this lens for testing for a couple of weeks, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. The lens's body is mostly made of plastic, keeping the weight down to a reasonable 630 grams, so it's not too heavy, although the rear section of the lens is made of metal. There's a weather sealing gasket around the metal lens mount, and Nikon market it as being dust and moisture resistant, and as usual with these expensive lenses, I'm too much of a wimp to throw a bucket of water over it to test its resilience. On the lens's body, we are treated to a variety of controls, including an auto manual focus switch, a smooth turning, customizable control ring, as well as another customizable function button on the side. The rubberized zoom ring turns somewhat heavily, but with only a little stickiness to it, so I think video makers will be quite pleased with that too. At the top, we have the manual focus ring, which is also rubberized and turns extremely smoothly, with the focus motor responding a little slowly but precisely to it being manipulated. Here you can see that the lens displays just a little focus breathing, nothing too dramatic though. And the lens's autofocus motor is really fantastic. It's accurate, silent, and lightning fast as you can see. My Nikon Z7 is starting to feel more like my Canon EOS R5. The lens's front filter size is 77mm wide, and it comes with quite a cheap feeling plastic lens hood. It does not have its own image stabilization built in, although most of Nikon's full frame Z system cameras do have in body image stabilization, so that's not really such a big deal. Overall, it is top marks here for build quality, everything needed is present and correct, and I like that Nikon have managed to keep its weight down to a reasonable level, although it's a little large, it's still easy to carry around with you. Alright, more importantly, let's look at image quality. Nikon's original 24-120mm f4 lens for digital SLR cameras, released years ago, had a bit of a mixed reputation, apparently suffering from corner softness and nervous looking out of focus backgrounds. Let's see if this lens's designers have managed to spruce things up since then. I'm testing it here on a Nikon Z7 camera, with its full frame 45 megapixel sensor, and in-camera corrections are turned on. At 24mm and f4, in the middle of the image, right away we see razor sharpness and excellent contrast. Let's look over in the corners. They are noticeably softer, but still very decent, capturing a good level of detail and contrast. f5.6 looks just a little brighter and punchier. The lens stays this sharp down to f11, where the effects of diffraction begin to introduce just a little softening. Still, a good start here. Let's zoom in to 60mm. At f4, once again, we see excellent sharpness in the middle, although perhaps not quite as razor sharp as things were at 24mm. Over in the corners, everything remains very nice indeed, excellent even, although not perfectly sharp. Stop down to f5.6 for a nice improvement, and again, the lens stays this sharp down to f11. Ok, let's zoom all the way in to 120mm now. Considering this lens's zoom range, surely the image quality has to slip up here. Well, at f4, pleasingly, the lens remains fantastically sharp in the middle. And the corners, still very good, plenty of detail here. Once again, stop down to f5.6 for a little boost in resolution, and that is as sharp as those corners get. 
Overall, well, this is brilliant image quality from a full frame lens with such a long zoom range. Although the corners are generally just a little softer than the middle, we are still seeing tons of detail being captured across the whole image frame and the whole zoom range, not to mention plenty of lovely contrast too. Ok, well, let's see about vignetting and distortion then. The following pictures have been taken in RAW without any of the usual in-camera corrections. At 24mm, the lens projects a strong barrel distortion with very dark corners at f4. Stop down to f8 and those corners brighten just a little. Zoom into 31mm and that distortion straightens out. At 120mm, we see some pretty wild pincushion distortion now and very heavy vignetting at f4. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 to see at least some of that corner darkness brightening up. Overall, this is 100% a lens that you'll want to keep in-camera corrections turned on with. Ok, let's see about close-up image quality now. The lens can focus down to 35cm which is lots of fun for shooting smaller subjects and adds to its overall general usefulness. At f4, close-up image quality is a bit ghostly here, however f5.6 and f8 look much sharper. How well does the lens work against bright lights? Whether you're shooting at wide angles or zoomed in, we encounter very little flaring or loss of contrast here. Again, that's really nice and makes it tempting to leave that nasty plastic lens hood at home. And finally, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. And if you zoom into your subject, then even at f4, you can get nicely out of focus backgrounds here. Those backgrounds look decently soft, not the smoothest I've ever seen, but neither are there any real problems. Overall, well, Put down whatever you might be holding because this lens deserves a round of applause. Nikon really have managed to get just about everything right with this one. A useful zoom range and maximum aperture, excellent sharpness and contrast, close focusing ability, lightning fast autofocus, a lens body that's not too heavy, it's just about all there, everything you could want. There might be some slightly sharper zoom lenses out there, but nothing this sharp combined with this kind of zoom range. Ok, I'm slightly biased I suppose because I love landscape and travel photography which is something this lens was clearly born for, but I am going to go out on a limb and say this is probably the best standard zoom lens available on the market today, and certainly my favourite for what it's worth. This thing comes very highly recommended. Thanks for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you find my videos helpful then check out my Patreon page down in the description below. My kind supporters over there help to keep this channel trucking on and moving forward all while getting all kinds of exclusive videos, early access and bonus content. Ciao for now.